What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about cold stratification. What is it? Why does it matter? Why does it matter to some plants and not others? And how to do it? Or at least a really simple way that I've used for many years that I really like. And so we're going to talk all about that in today's episode, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy. If you do, make sure to throw a like up there. Subscribe if you're not yet already. We are on the road to 1 million subscribers. I just can't believe that that number is even in existence right now with our channel. I mean, we have been doing this for so long. We're going on, uh, I think, 11 years of this, and uh, it's been a blast. Every single episode has been exciting. Every single episode has been fun for me to do, and I truly appreciate that uh, that opportunity to uh, to bring some amazing gardening content out to all of you. So thank you so much for allowing me to do this for, uh, for as long as I have. Um, but with that being said, let's jump on into today's video with the first thing, which is, what is cold stratification? Well, when it comes to cold stratification, we are basically tricking a seed into thinking that it went through winter. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because, as we'll kind of touch more on, is because certain seeds need cold weather in order to germinate. Some seeds don't really care. As long as the weather is above freezing and the soil is damp, you know, the general uh, seed sprouting criteria is met, things like soil temperature, um, soil moisture, uh, stuff like that. Those usually are basic criteria. However, there are certain types of plants that actually need a little bit more to kind of meet their criteria. And so it's kind of like a startup sequence and seeds need to have the first box checked before they can move on to the second box. And those are seeds that generally require uh, things like cold stratification. Now the types of seeds that, uh, that require that are generally all exclusively perennials, as you'll see. Now there are maybe about 1% or so outliers that are annuals that could benefit from cold stratification. But as you'll see, 999 I would say, percent of seeds that require cold stratification are, uh, are perennials, or at least perennials in some area that, um, that gets winter weather. Because as you'll see, there's a couple here that aren't perennials here in Michigan, but are perennials, you know, just slightly further south um, that are perennials, and they still get winter uh, in those areas. And so, um, biologically, these plants have kind of geared themselves to this safety mechanism of uh, waiting through, basically uh, waiting until they get through winter weather to germinate, so that they don't germinate too soon and risk dying. So. It's something that a lot of seeds that are perennials have kind of adapted to over time because if they germinate too soon, they don't have enough time to get established. And if you've been growing a garden for any length of time, you'll know that perennials are the things that take the longest to get established. They take the longest to get established because they have to get their roots growing first so that their roots can help the plant survive through winter because the roots are actually where the energy is stored for next year's plant. And so it just, biologically makes sense. Now, I'm gonna give you some examples of uh, of some plants that need cold stratification. Uh, some like common vegetable ones here are, uh, you know, uh, herbs and vegetables are things like St. John's wort, green globe artichoke, strawberries, a very, very popular one that needs to be cold stratified, Mary Washington asparagus, or just any asparagus, um, catnip, catnip's another one that needs to be cold stratified, marshmallow plant, and uh, milk thistle. There you go, focus on that. <laughs> if they aren't focusing, I apologize. Uh, I gotta hold them a little closer to the camera there. Um, and uh, lemon balm, and lavender. Lavender is a super popular one that needs to be cold stratified. And one of the issues that people uh, that people have is that they write into us saying, my seeds aren't germinating. I, th I think I have bad seed. The very first thing we go to is, well, first of all, if we know what seeds they are, we'll ask them if they're cold stratified. If they're saying like, I'm trying to grow lavender and I'm just not having any luck. The very first thing we ask them is, did you cold stratify? Because the difference between not cold stratifying and cold stratifying can be a difference of 90 to 95% germination. 
That's it's that crazy. You can go from literally like one or two seeds out of a hundred germinating to like 90 to 95% uh, of those a hundred seeds germinating. So 90 to 95 seeds out of the hundred will germinate after you cold stratify. It makes a huge difference. Now, uh, there's other uh, plants and seeds as well that need to be cold stratified. If you're trying to grow things like deciduous trees, oak trees, um, maple trees, walnut trees, even fruit trees like peach trees, um, uh, apple trees, pear trees, any basically any deciduous tree that goes through winter that produces seed, generally 99.9% .9 of those need to be cold stratified as well. So um, there is a lot of seeds that can benefit. And, uh, and so a lot of people also ask, well, can I, should I cold stratify things like tomatoes? The answer is no. You don't need to cold stratify things like tomatoes or peppers or lettuce and onions and things like that because they just don't need cold stratification for whatever reason. Um, my guess would be is they grow they, they naturally grow in their native climate in like a tropical environment that never experiences winter. And so I, I don't think, uh, I'm not 100% sure that's the reason, but that'd be my guess, but they don't need cold stratification. So just basically do your research. You can always do a Google search of like, does blankety blank need cold stratification? And it'll generally uh, pull up the answer. I can't give you all of them because there's millions of plants out there, but it's a good list to get you started and kind of a common rule of thumb is if it's a perennial and it's a perennial in an area that experiences cold winter weather, uh, cold stratification is uh, what you want to do. Now, I want to talk about a really cool method of cold stratification that I have been doing for years and it's, su it's super effective. I did not create it, but um, a lot of people in the gardening community do it and it's known as the paper towel method. So what we do is I have two started right here. I have some asparagus started for this year's garden, and I have some lavender started for this year's garden using the paper towel method. And so that being said, I'm gonna show you just how simple it is. All you have to do is just take some paper towel, <laughs> how it gets its name, and we are going to throw it into a Ziploc baggie. I like to kind of double it up just so it's a little, little extra thicker or a little more thick. <laughs> A little thicker. <laughs> oh man, I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are as well. Um, and so uh, once a little, once it's just a little bit thicker, it holds on to a little bit more moisture. We're going to dampen it, but not soak it. We're going to put some water in, and you want to just dampen it. It should not be completely saturated with water because if it is, you're going to run the risk of things like rot and uh, mold and stuff. So we're just dampening the paper towel enough to, there we go, enough to get it damp. Any excess water, just basically dump it out like that so that you don't have too much water. So now, what do you guys wanna start? Uh, I think, I think we're gonna give some artichokes a try. I mean, I grow artichokes almost every year. They're a phenomenal crop. They're super beautiful and the honeybees absolutely love them when they bloom. Um, so we're gonna try some artichokes. So all we do is we simply take the seeds and we open up the baggie and sprinkle the seeds in. And then you seal the Ziploc baggie, just like that. And now all you do is you throw it in your fridge. This is a super simple way to cold stratifying your seed. And uh, a lot of people ask, well, how long do I have to leave it in my fridge for? Just keep it in your fridge for two to three weeks. You don't have to leave it in the, in the fridge for like three to four months. Um, you know, Michigan winter is like three to four months, um, sometimes even longer. But when it comes to cold stratification, you just have to throw it in the fridge for two to three weeks. I prefer the crisper. I don't really know why I prefer that. I just, that's where I've always thrown it. But um, I've also never tested other places. It just seems like the most... If I, if I was a seed that wanted to be cold stratified, that's where I'd want to be is in the crisper. It just has the least amount of like airflow and movement and things don't dehydrate as much because it's like more humid and stuff. So it just seems like a place that I'd like to be. So I throw all my seeds in the crisper and I literally just fold them flat like that so they fit. And then I just fold them flat like that so they fit. And then I fold them flat like that so they fit. 
and I can I can cold stratify, you know, so much. I mean, they they lay flat, so it's just super super easy. Now, what do you do after your uh, after your seeds have uh, stayed in the fridge for two to three weeks? Very simple. You want to take them out, just like that. You want to open them up, just like that. Oops, don't flip over on me. Once you have opened them up, you want to take your seeds and you want to plant them into a really good sterile seed starting mix. Just a, a general, you know, all-purpose seed starting mix with, um, you know, uh, a, a slow-release fertilizer is great. Um, just get them ready to germinate. Don't keep them in the bag. A lot of people keep them in the bag and then the seeds that don't germinate end up molding and you have a really nasty mess and it sometimes can affect the germination rates of your viable seeds. So just take them out of there throw them in some potting mix and get them ready to germinate. Now, the final question I always get asked is, what happens if I forget them in my fridge too long? Are there any uh, side effects? The answer is there can be if you leave them in too long. So seeds that are, because this paper towel is damp, seeds that are left in the fridge for like five to seven weeks can have some issues with germination because the, the moisture does cause rot and mold over time. Even though it's pretty cold in your fridge, um, obviously things like cheese can still mold in your fridge. Things like you know, yogurt and stuff can still mold in your fridge. Uh, stuff can still expire and go bad. And so seeds are absolutely no exception. This is not a sterile environment by any means. And so um, mold and mildew and stuff can still survive even at those colder temperatures. It just takes longer for it to happen. So I would not leave your seeds in there for like five to seven weeks. Um, if, you know, if it's not time to plant yet, I simply would, would just wait to do it. And that leads me to my final, final thing that you want to do. And that is to properly time your cold stratification. So how we do this is I look at my calendar or I look on the back of a, uh, of a seed packet here. And for instance, for asparagus, it's going to say, start indoors eight to 12 weeks before your last frost date. So what I would do is I would take eight to 12 weeks and I would add two weeks to that. So I would basically start my seeds 10 to 14 weeks before the last frost date. Um, for things like lavender, lavender is four to six weeks before your last frost date. So about six to eight weeks before my last frost date, I would throw them in the fridge. That way they have enough time to get up and growing before my last frost date. So I'm starting them inside, I'm getting a nice head start and um, I'm also cold stratifying them. So uh, that's, that's how I would recommend doing it. That's how I've always done it and it's worked out so, so well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a like up there, subscribe if you're not yet already. Comment down below if you have any questions. I think I've covered just about everything about cold stratification. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, I'll be down there for the next 30 minutes answering your questions. So thank you guys so much for your support. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you later. See ya. Bye.